Welcome to The Artist Matters. I'm Alex Rudy, and each week you will meet incredible artists from all walks of life. Filmmakers, writers, actors, painters, musicians, and so many more sharing their stories to motivate and inspire the creative in you. Whether you're doing it for fun or looking to make a living, this show will help you on your journey to bring out the artist within and letting the world know that your art matters. Hi everybody, it's Alex and the Artist Matters. It is the second week of September. Thanks for coming back and listening to the show. It was a little stressful because the hurricane was coming and I wasn't sure if I'd be able to... uh, record any new episodes, but thankfully Dorian did not hit this part of Florida at all. I'm praying for the people that it did hit in the Bahamas and some of uh, the Carolinas, so hopefully that's it for the hurricane season. Anyway, don't want to deal with that anymore. It's not fun. Oddly enough, as uh, Dorian was approaching the, the weekend before, I went to my first networking event since I've created the podcast, it was in Tampa. It was at the uh, Stress Center where they do lots of plays and shows. And they were having a theater festival. And I got to meet a lot of people who run theaters that have unique themes and different types of varieties. It was great. I got to hand out a lot of cards, met a lot of great people, and you will be seeing some as guests. In the future. Can't wait for you to hear their stories. It was really nice to be there. All right, let's get into today's episode. And our guest is Rebecca McGill. I connected with her on the Facebook group that I posted a request for anyone interested in being in the show. And she was one of the first. And we finally arranged time to chat. And Rebecca's unique artistic creativity is woodworking. My first woodworker. She'll explain what that's about. She does live in Colorado and is getting ready to move, actually, to a new house. But she did set aside a part of her garage to do her woodworking. That She explains that she got into it when she was at a young age, seeing her dad do it. And that was the little thing. She'd help him do pieces and... As she got older, she kind of pushed it to the side, but noticed that the woodworking was calling her back, and just recently, she went to the Dreamtopia workshop put on by Kathy Heller, who does Don't Keep Your Day Job, and that reawakened the artist within her, and she started getting back into it, enjoying the process. Of course, her dad was happy to see her back at it and helped her with some pieces. Even her twins are showing interest in it. It's great. She gives great advice and tells you about what she does. And, you know, it's it's like anything. Just get into it for the fun of it and see what what comes out. Don't worry if it doesn't have to be perfect. Just create, see what happens, enjoy the process, and enjoy this interview. Coming at you right now, here is my chat with Rebecca McGill. Welcome to the show, Rebecca McGill. Welcome. Thank you. I'm really excited, actually. I I know we've been talking about this for a little while now, so I'm glad it's working out. Yes. We make time for our fellow artists. (laughs) All right, let's get into this. So um, what were your earliest creative memories? Was it woodworking or was it something else? Um, I would say probably a combination as far as like my actual creativity coming out. I think that originally was more in a drawing and painting sense Mm -hmm. that I first kind of um, saw that. And for a long time, I thought that was my creative outlet. Uh, But woodworking has been a part of my history since I was little. I have very fond memories of helping my dad build decks and do projects around the house. So that was less creative because I was following his lead, Um, but it was still something I really enjoyed, and I don't think I realized how much I enjoyed it until finding it again later in life. 
So dad did woodworking. Was this his employment? Was it something he did on the side? It was just around the house um, at the time growing up. It's now his full-time employment. Um, but we would just build decks or build like, uh, we did this wood wall that actually reminds me a lot of my art now where we piece together scrap wood that he had in the garage. And instead of it just going to waste and sitting there, he actually did this whole pinwheel pattern on a wall down in the basement instead of drywall. Um, and that was really, really fun because that was a puzzle and that was cool to do with him and watch him kind of puzzle it together and like work through some of those challenges. And so I draw on that memory a lot. So as you got older, were you still doing woodworking with dad? Did you do any shop in school, anything like that? Wood shop? I didn't. Mm. No, um, it was offered. It wasn't um, something that I elected to do. Uh, it really fell away from my um, my history as I hit the teen years. I stopped kind of working on stuff like that. I think uh, part of my journey has been a struggle to come back to it because there's different reasons that I felt like maybe it wasn't a good idea for me or a good fit for me. And that's why I thought that, you know, different forms of art were my creative outlet because for some reason I had this block with woodworking where I just felt like it wasn't a viable option for me. Um, and that some of that is just like the gender stereotypes that kind of surround woodworking that I'm really thankful are starting to melt away a little bit more. Um, and there's more room opening up for women in this industry. Um, and I really want to be a pioneer to show that it's something that we can all do. Um, but yeah, train years, I, I definitely took a step aside and wasn't even thinking, not even on my radar until probably about a year ago that uh, woodworking could even possibly be a fit for me. A year ago. In between all that time, was there anything else you were doing creatively artistically struggling to try and be a painter <laughs> mm. like i have notebooks of oil pastels and watercolors and i really thought that was what i was supposed to be doing because my grandma on both sides was uh painters and they were um my grandma Livernoy on my mom's side was a very good painter um, so I have a lot of her work and my grandma Cortade on my father's side, she was uh, a really good like craft painter. So I thought that was maybe my calling. Um, but I always get so frustrated that it was never really fun. <laughs> it was more frustrating than it was um, a release. And so that's what I thought I was supposed to be doing. I even took art classes in you know high school and everything and tried to make that work and it just it just never was really meant to be. Mm -hmm. Why do you think so many artists put their art to the side and then come back to it? Is it just life getting in the way sometimes? It's a variety of things. Um, I, obviously, it's going to be case by case, probably a little different. Um, I do think that there's a little bit of a, a rawness when you're actually sharing your art. And I'm surprised at how raw it feels sharing my own woodworking. It feels like a medium that wouldn't lend a lot of vulnerability because you're not painting something that's going to be like really deep and intimate to how you feel. It doesn't seem like it should have emotional connection, but I still get anxiety and a little bit of um, just fear around sharing it still and being judged. Mm. So I wonder if that's a common feeling with artists that you don't want to put it out there. And so it kind of remains this little secret thing. And if you never push past it being your own secret little thing and sharing it with the world, it can't grow and continue in your life. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think for me, I never really felt comfortable sharing any kind of painting art with anybody. And so it never pushed me to grow in that medium. Mm -hmm. um, and so with woodworking, I'm, I'm sharing a lot more of that. I feel more comfortable sharing more of that, but I still have a little anxiety about what people think. So what made you decide to get back into woodworking? Um, I suffered from postpartum depression after I had my twins. And it took a long time for me to realize how much I missed play and creativity in my life. Uh, with encouragement from podcasts like Kathy Heller's and from my therapist, uh, there was a huge push in understanding that I needed to find a creative, playful outlet. And uh, woodworking came about because 
it seemed to be a pattern that every time my parents came to visit, I live in Colorado, they live in Michigan. Uh, I'd end up working on a woodworking project with my dad. So the first time we did a big project, it was we built our deck. And then the next time he came out, I had a couple ideas of what I wanted to work on. And I thought if he could help me get started, I could probably take it on from there. And so I proposed that maybe he helped me with what became my first piece of art. Um, and we built that together over the course of the, the week about that they were here. And so it was a lot of encouragement and support and guidance from family. Um, it seemed to be that the woodworking kept popping up even in therapy sessions where my therapist would be like, I really think you need to give it a try. It mm -hmm. seems like a story keeps circling back to woodworking and there's something there. Um, so when I was at Dreamtopia with Kathy Heller back this winter, through that whole seminar, I finally had this breakthrough that I didn't have to be a perfect woodworking artist. I just needed to try and to either put it to rest as not a viable option for me or see where it could take me. And that kind of relieved the stress of my perfectionism that it didn't have to be perfect. I just needed to try it. And so that's why a few months later when my dad came out, we, uh, we worked on my first board and it felt amazing. It was a feeling I had missed of just losing yourself into something and not knowing what time it was and coming out the other side, just really proud of what you created. Um, and I just knew instantly it was, it was what was missing. And it, it was a serious, um, form of therapy for myself at home, even to work through some of that and experience that creativity again. It, it lit something up. What was the piece you made with your dad? Um, it's actually, I know you won't be able to see this on the podcast, but it's the one behind me. Um, oh. And it's all over my Instagram and stuff. And so it's about a two foot by four foot board where we then just interlaid different pattern of um, kind of like a, I think it looks kind of like Scandinavian almost. Uh, different colors of tones of wood and paint um, to create this just art piece, and I love it. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I wish you guys. I'm never say. letting it go. <laughs> no, hey, hey, that's an important piece there. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you went to Dreamtopia workshop. Yeah, I did. And it awakened that thing within you. What else did you learn from the workshop that helped you with your creativity? Besides, you know, not you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I guess I just kept hearing over and over again the importance of play from, like, Jeff Goins talking about it. And um, actually, Saul Blinkoff was the best part of that whole experience. And when he took a question from the audience who the gentleman was kind of struggling with what medium to use, and I think that resonated with me a lot, that when Saul said it doesn't matter what the medium is, it's just that you're creating and I think that opened the possibility then for me to say, okay, it doesn't matter what the medium is. Even if I move away from this style of wood art and move into a different one, I just got to get the process going. So after Dreamtopia, what did this awaken within you, this desire to go back to woodworking and wooden rings? Yeah, so I think, again, with my struggle with um, the femininity side of, like, trying to introduce that into woodworking and feeling that kind of push of whatever it is. I thought that rings were going to be the outlet that I would adventure into with woodworking. Um, so when I got back from Dreamtopia, I even contacted a local woodworker and asked if I could just take some of his scrap pieces that he doesn't use because I figured he'd probably just be burning them or getting rid of them. And he was really awesome. Um, Eden Oaks here in Colorado Springs and he gave me a whole stack of different types of hardwoods and I started playing around with that. I bought a um, scroll saw so that I could cut them out. And I think I broke at least six rings in the process of trying to make them. Mm. And I'd get so frustrated getting to the end, sanding it, and then it would just snap. Mm. And I was like, okay, this isn't working. <laughs> this isn't it. Um, and then luckily not too long after is when my dad came out and, I fully embraced that, um, you know, working with a table saw and a miter saw were something that I could do 